procedural power outside the provisions of section 200 of the CPC applications may be made by that court. How is it? the term? Why don't you send back the file to her? Yes, because of uh, yeah, the yes. fact that we are the agency, we just request. Okay, you can go to four hours. She said no more. Moses Dola Otieno. Moses Dola Otieno is charged with the offense of murder contrary to section 202. According to prosecution witnesses, Moses Dola and Sarah Kabiru lived together as husband and wife. It's and Sarah's brother, PW2 that the couple started experiencing problems when Dola lost his job with the local with a local media house. The couple's house help, Eunice Mwangi, who lived with the couple, was present in the house on the material day. She confirmed that both Dola and Sarah were in the house on the night of 30th of April 2011. The following morning, however, she saw only Dola, who handed her the baby. According to Eunice, Dollar left the house uh, on the 1st of May at around 8 a.m. Sarah's mother, Sarah's brother, Gitahi, testified that Dollar went to his house at around 8 a.m., woke him up, and that Dollar appeared disturbed and confided in him that they had quarreled with Sarah, who had then left the house. Meanwhile, Sarah's mother called her son and asked him to go and check on her. Joseph informed her that he was with Dollar, and Dollar then on the phone told the mother-in-law that Sarah had left the house. He assured her that she would be back. Later in the evening, Sarah's body was found in the bedroom. Her brother, along with police officers who saw, saw the body, which was neatly tucked in bed. Sarah's mother and father testified that Dollar called them that evening to inform them that Sarah was dead. As ev events unfolded, Dollar turned himself to the police at the Naivasha police station. Two police officers testified to have uh, arrested him and handed him back to Buruburu police. In defense, the accused uh, made a lengthy sworn statement in which he informed the court that the pressures associated with joblessness had strained their relationship. He said that the wife was quarrelsome and that the parents had intervened at some point. Uh, according to him, his narration of the events of the day, he prepared dinner on the 30th of April, and when the wife came in late, she served him. In the morning, however, a quarrel erupted. Which quarrel was occasioned by Sarah's complaint that the music that Dola had switched on was loud and had disturbed her sleep. The accused uh, told the court that the wife tried to stab him with a pair of scissors, which he grabbed from her and threw it on the bed. That she picked the scissors and held, that he picked the scissors and he held her round and both of them fell on the bed and she hit her head on the bed canopy. That he picked the child from the baby coat and took him to the maid. Uh, there's no doubt that uh, death was proved. The deceased died of severe head injury due to blunt force trauma, according to the postmortem report presented by Dr. Degua.
I accepted the report. The findings were not only consistent with the oral evidence of the witnesses who viewed the body, but was also not challenged by the defense. It was evident, therefore, to the court that the, uh, that the deceased suffered an unlawful death. As to whether the accused uh, caused the death of the deceased, The evidence of the housemaid, Eunice. Eunice told the court that it was the norm for us, her to go off duty on Sunday and that Sarah would usually wake up to take care of the baby. That was not the case on that day. It was Dollar who woke up and handed her the baby. Eunice's testimony regarding the whereabouts of the deceased and the accused at the material time was corroborated by uh, other witnesses. Gitahi testified that Dola went to see him early in the morning and asked him for a drink. In, in the event, uh, other than Eunice's evidence, the accused himself admitted that they were at home with the deceased on the material night. Therefore, although there was no eyewitness to what happened in the bedroom, the court is satisfied that it was only the accused, the deceased, and their infant uh, child who were in the bedroom at the material time. The evidence and the conduct of the accused, on the conduct of the accused, was given by number 230637, Superintendent of Police Paul. Uh, uh, keep career than the OCPD at Naivasha. He described that uh, the accused who walked into his office told him that he was being looked for by Buruburu police in connection with the death of Sarah Wamboy. It can safely be concluded, therefore, that the action of turning himself to the police was further evidence that the accused was culpable. He would not have surrendered himself to the police if he was not. The above analysis, however, does still not show exactly what happened in the bedroom. Was there a fight? And if there was, who was the aggressor? Was the fatal injury on the deceased accidental? It is not easy to find answers to these questions. The accused version of events has already been uh, narrated. He made an admission that he quarreled and fought with the deceased. He said that the deceased had become quarrelsome. The accused described the confrontation in these words, that she wanted to stab me with a pair of scissors. In a split second, I stretched my hand and held the scissors. I pricked my palm but managed to squeeze her hand to release the scissors. I took the scissors, threw it on the bed. I did not want to fight. She went after the scissors and I was wondering why she was being violent. I held her around. We both fell on the bed. She hit her bed on the bed, her head on the bed canopy. I realized that she, later on that she, she had said, Honor, umeni umiza. At that point, I didn't know. I quickly got up, took away the baby and I asked the maid to take care of him. There are two disturbing issues that would make the court not believe the accused account in respect of what he alleges took place in the bedroom. He says that he pushed the deceased and she, she hit her head on the canopy. The witnesses who entered the room in the evening of the 1st of May however found that the room was in shambles with clothes thrown all over. This would mean that there was not just a quarrel or a scalp but a physical fight in the room. It would mean that the push was not accidental and was not one of reaction. Secondly, the body of the deceased was found neatly tucked in bed. There was photographic evidence which shows that the deceased was lying facing up in the bed. No one will ever know why the accused would tuck the deceased in bed for in bed for clearly he had assaulted her causing her grave injuries as 
detailed by the pathologist and as exhibited in the post-mortem. It is possible that the accused sustained the injuries in the course of a scalpel, which it is also possible that he may have inflicted the superficial injuries in an attempt to hoodwink the investigators that there was indeed a fight and that the deceased was the aggressor. Considering the injuries suffered by the deceased, however, it is clear that he, the accused assaulted her. The injuries do not reflect a stab by a sharp object. Rather, as the pathologist stated, they appeared to have been caused through one being pushed against or hit against the wall. The fatal assault, I find, was inflicted by no one else other than the accused. It is then the accused that caused the unlawful death of the deceased. I have anciently considered from the evidence tendered in this trial whether or not the accused intended to kill his wife. The evidence shows a relationship that was budding initially, but which was progressively deteriorating when the couple faced pressures of joblessness. It appears from the testimony of the family members that the accused became abusive when the deceased regained a job and was doing well while he remained unemployed. Clearly, the events of the material time shows a couple that was uh, under pressure. They could not just have fought over a mundane issue like loud music. What is clear to the court is that they have, there may have been a fight. It is indeed clear that the accused was the aggressor and that he was the stronger party in the fight. That alone, however, cannot be sufficient to show that he had intention to kill. He may have pushed her against the wall or the bed or the wall, which which proved fatal. The conduct of the accused in seeking his, out his brother-in-law after the incident can be interpreted in two ways. Clearly, according to the testimony of his brother-in-law, the accused was disturbed. He resorted to drinking alcohol early in the morning and he turned himself into the police to this, to the court's mind, was the conduct of a man who was full of regret and who may not have in, had the intention to execute a plan to kill his wife. I am prepared on the basis of the evidence available to the court to give him the benefit of doubt. As stated by the Court of Appeal in Nzuki versus Republic, where there are two possibilities, the benefit of the doubt should go to the accused. Therefore, I have found that the accused caused the unlawful death of the deceased. I have also found that the element of mens rea was not proved beyond reasonable doubt. I apply the provisions of the law to substitute the charge of murder to one of manslaughter. The accused is thus convicted of the lesser offense of manslaughter. That is the judgment of the court. The accused having been out on bond must now lose that liberty. His bond terms are cancelled. Pardon? You are ready to meet the gate. In the meantime, the accused, having been found guilty, uh, is remanded in custody. So this report to be filed within, but the families live far apart. Yes, and that's what I was saying because okay. the, the, the mother and the other the court is not suggesting.
uh, one way or the other how the sentence will go. I think it's, it needs to be clarified. To confirm that report and for the file to be transmitted. After 21 days, that gives us which date? <coughs> 26th of October. Mention on the 26th of October. Uh, before the deputy registrar, because all she will do is to confirm that the report has been filed and to take custody of the file to transmit it to the court.